Hi, Diana. You're on with Tracy and Jen. Hi, Tracy and Jen. Hello. Hi. Thank yeah. you for calling. Sure. Um, so I'm calling because I uh, I'm I identify as a Christian, mm -hmm. and my 23 year old son does not. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's been listening uh, mostly to Matt, but he listens to you guys too, says you're good. <laughs> and so I did some YouTubing of Matt. And we kind of made a deal that uh, I would call in and talk to you and he would be willing to come to talk to my pastor for a little bit. Okay. And maybe we would okay. learn something. So can I, can I, I just ask, what does your son, does your son identify? Does he self-label? Um, I, I think an atheist, although... Um, in listening to Matt's definition and my son's definition, I, my definition of an atheist is one who denies the existence of God while an agnostic doubts the existence of God. What if a person doesn't and, believe a God exists? Well, that's an atheist. But that don't believe him. If, I, if you don't believe a God exists, that doesn't mean that you believe no God exists, right? Do you understand that the difference? So you don't believe a God exists. That right. Doesn't mean so, for example, if I have we the example that we give sometimes to help people understand this concept is that you have a big glass jar full of gumballs, and someone comes in and makes a claim that the number of gumballs in the jar is an odd number. Now we don't we don't have any reason to know why they would think that, and so the question would be, do you believe them that the number is odd? If we don't have any good reason to believe them, then we would say, no, I wouldn't believe the claim that there's an odd number. But that does not mean that I'm asserting that the number is even, right? It means right. that and That I, would make you an, an agnostic, right? But we just well. said that if you don't believe a God exists, that you would feel comfortable saying that's an atheist. Yes. Right, and so if the claim is, a, does a God exist, and the atheist says, I don't believe that claim because there's not sufficient evidence, then that does not mean that the atheist is asserting that the number is even. It just means they're sure. not accepting the claim that it's odd, right? So right. this... And, and to me, and this is just, you know, to me, my definition, my son always teases me about my definitions. To me, that's an agnostic because you you don't believe that there right, is but, a God. But, <laughs> okay, but agnosticism... Is, is not related to belief. It's yes, about knowledge. It's about knowledge. Right. Gnostic mean, is, is, it means, you know, knowing or not knowing, right? So agnostic and gnostic is about knowledge, not beliefs. Whereas atheism mm. and theism are about beliefs, right? Asking a person what they believe okay. is different than asking them if they believe they also have knowledge of something. Knowledge is simply a, a subset of belief that is like a higher confidence level where you think that you would probably not be incorrect about it. You can believe a thing without and acknowledge that you're not um, as certain as you could be about it. Well, I guess that would make him an atheist because he doesn't necessarily believe that there is a God. Okay, right. And and to his credit, I mean, I have no proof. And I even told him when I called, I. I have no proof. You won't be able to convince me otherwise, and I probably won't be able to convince you otherwise. Yeah, not without proof. Because, yeah. <laughs> I would say that without yeah. evidence, it's going to be hard to convince us of much. Yeah, I would agree. And it's just that most of my belief is belief, is based on uh, anecdotal things that I have felt, that I feel. Um, Why do and, your feelings, what, what do your feelings, how do you connect your feelings with your belief in God? Um, well, for an example, you might call me crazy, but, uh, and it is a comfort thing. It's a comfort thing to many people. I, I feel like I've believed in God, uh, since I've been aware of myself, um, going back to four years old or earlier, I don't feel like I've ever had a time in my life where God was not with me, which is not to say I haven't had some horrible times, because I have. Um, but even then, I was going through horrible times, but I never had the feeling that God had left me. Okay, so here's a question, because this is difficult for me to follow. You said you had a feeling that you believed in God from the time that you can remember, right? So I don't know what a feeling of believing is, but I'm going to say that let's just call that you had a belief in God, you accepted the claim a God exists as true from as far back as you can remember. 
it's, it's like it's part of my core. That's what I mean by feeling when people say I identify as this or identify Well, beliefs that. are part of our identity, right? I mean, the things that we believe yeah. are part of our identity. And so when you say that you believe a God exists and that you've, you've identified, you know, even if you didn't know the label, you identified as theist from as far back as you can remember. So a person identifies a certain way can a person identify a certain way and, and still be wrong? Could I be, for example, identifying as someone who believes that Bigfoot exists and ever since I was little and saw it on television, I've believed it? And can Definitely. I believe it? And I could I, be I, wrong I about it. Find out, yeah, I'll find out when I die, I guess. Will you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know <laughs> either. I, I, I don't know that you will find out when you die. So I guess what I'm trying to get at here is a feeling that uh, of something being true we know is not evidence that it is true because people feel many times for example some people feel their spouse is quite faithful and their spouse is cheating so feelings of what's true really don't inform us about what is actually true correct true however oftentimes those feelings about the cheating spouse are true. <laughs> but aren't those feelings, shouldn't they be based on evidence that the spouse is cheating and not just accusing them without evidence? And, and most of the time, I, I think a lot of the time they are, they're based on, they don't know their space spouse is cheating, they just feel they are because their spouse, you know, keeps working late or their spouse keeps going off the weekend. Right. So what you're saying is they start to experience evidence that aligns with the idea that they're maybe not being honest, that they're spending more time away from home than they used to, things that correspond to cheating. And sure. so and, they... And for me, for me, okay. God, for example, I mean, when I had my... I, I married an atheist. I'm not, you know... <laughs> He was an atheist when I married him, but he was a very good person. And we talked about uh, religion and raising the children, and, and he respected my beliefs, and I respected his. And um, when our first child was born, you know, I looked at this new infant in front of me and said, this is a miracle that all we can basically do nothing, not pretty much nothing. What and do you mean we can do nothing? We have sex, right? That's all. That's it. <laughs> Right, but you do understand how sex results in procreation, is that correct? Like, I mean, a rat can procreate. A yes, cockroach exactly. can procreate. Is yeah. that a miracle? Yes, to me it is. Okay, it's so Ebola bacteria pro propagating and hurting and harming tons of people, is that miraculous to you? Um, I think miraculous things are good things. Um, so what is it I, I called don't. when Ebola is is like breeding in your gut and killing you? Well, um, it was explained to me once like this, and it kind of makes sense. And, and I explained it to my son, but he didn't buy it either, and you probably won't. <laughs> but it's kind of like a teacher in a classroom, right? And the student stands up to the teacher and makes fun of the teacher. And the teacher says, okay, fine, you, you teach the class and you see what you can do. And he doesn't just throw the student out, right, saying you don't believe, go. He says, you take a try and people listen to him and they see that, you know, the student is wrong. And, and it's... Okay, well, show me where I'm wrong. Where is the, how is Ebola breeding not a miracle, but you having you breeding is a miracle, and a rat and a cockroach breeding is a miracle, but Ebola breeding is not a miracle. I I think there is evil in the world. I I didn't ask that. I asked why is some procreation miraculous, and other procreation you say is not don't seem to categorize as miraculous. If it's harmful, does it matter who it's harmful to? Um, like if, a, if yeah. there's an insect, for example, that uh, lays its eggs inside another insect and those eggs hatch and eat that, uh, the, the live insect that is like the victim of that, is the insect that bred, that is the victim miraculous, but the insect mm -hmm. that breeds that, you know, eats the other insect is not miraculous, it's evil? No, to me that's all just circle of life. So, okay, so now that? it's not, okay, so I, I'm, what's, what's not circle of life about? about all this other procreation then? Well, it, it is 
it is kind of circle of life, but it's also miraculous. I mean, I read about how, you know, how babies form and how their skin, okay. you know, forms around and how spina bifida occurs because the skin doesn't cover the spine. And, and it's just all these, the, just the, um, I don't know, statistics, the probability of everything happening okay. the way yeah. it does. So are you saying that a, sp that a baby born with a spinal disorder is a miracle? Yes. Okay, so yeah. miracles can be harmful, right? They can be not. They can be not what humans would call perfect. How do you tell the difference between something that's a miracle and something that's not? Mm. Mm, I guess you know, and this will sound weird too. <laughs> I was going to say, I guess the the positiveness, the love, the you know it. If it causes horrible, horrible things for everything around it, um, I, I, I have a hard time calling that a miracle. If I drive to work, is that a miracle? Um, in a way. Okay, in what way? <laughs> but that seems, it, well, in a way it's a miracle for the human body, but in a way it's not. Can you explain it, why the human body is a miracle? Like, what is it about the human body that you think requires divinity to explain? We did nothing. What do you mean we did nothing? Humans. Humans did nothing. I humans mean, did nothing? Yeah. I don't know, understand what you're yeah, saying. What does that mean? Um, I, I mean, for a car, we built the car, right? So you're driving the car to work. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with the human knowledge that went into that. Yeah. And I think the human knowledge is a gift from God. The ability Why? to do all of these Why things. do you think human knowledge is a gift from God? Because I mean, man didn't create it. So anything man doesn't what? create is a gift from God? Oh, um, kind of, yeah. So the vacuum of space is a gift from God. What is that gift? I mean, I, I guess I'm trying to figure, okay, so if a, yeah. what, what makes you think that God is involved in any of this? Uh, Besides the feeling, which we've already agreed can be wrong. Well, and the probability perhaps. Of What's the happening? probability? The, I mean, we're the only planet, right, that we know of. I'm not saying there aren't any others out there. They could be discovered. And I do agree that, you know, in ancient times, people assigned things to God. And as we got more knowledge, we learned that, okay, that isn't really God. That is due to this. Right. And I, and I can accept that. And I'm like, well, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I, I trust some, you know, some science, most science I okay. trust. All right. Um, I don't think that science and religion are exclusionary, um, but I'm kind of like the opposite of of you in the way that if I if I don't have the proof <laughs> that it isn't from God, then it, it seems more like it's from. I mean, so, so you believe it, things without proof, whereas I believe things with proof, or let's call it evidence, right? So you believe things without well, evidence, and, and you find that to be somehow better. And not only that, but you just described I, I didn't, the God of I the gaps. The God of the what? The God of the gaps. But what the God of gaps is, I mean, what Jen is referring to, is the idea of assigning God to things you can't explain, right? So I don't have an explanation for this, therefore God is responsible for it. And that is not reasonable. It's not reasonable to say, well, I don't know what causes this, so I'm just going to say that this causes it because I don't well, know. And I wouldn't say that I do that with, everything just well, what things that seem like too improbable to well, well, wait, wait, wait. how do you how do you determine when something's too improbable and it has to be god versus when you know you're just willing to withhold well, judgment oh well, everybody everybody you uh, everyone has you know like matt was talking about reasonable beliefs and i suppose reasonable is subjective right <laughs> what is reasonable? Well, no, you can actually you can actually go through logical steps to uh, like connect your reasoning in order to show how you drew a conclusion from premises, right? So you have these premises that you start with, these realities that you start with, and then you have to link them in logical ways in order to come up with a logical conclusion. That would be reasoning, right? But and I don't and think if you that God is necessarily logical, you what now? 
I don't think that God is necessarily logical. Then it's not reasonable yeah. by definition. I mean, but you, what and, you're basically and, saying is you're defending an unreasonable belief. Well, and, well here, they, they say that love is sometimes not logical, right? People love people. Cor yeah, correct. Love. Emotions are definitely not something I would classify as, as logical. Right. So, I mean, there can be things that exist and that are not necessarily logical. Right, like people that call the show and give us unreasonable arguments. I mean, there's, there's definitely, you can be illogical. I'm just simply asking if when you're trying to come to a conclusion about what's true and not true, whether or not n not using reason and not using logic is, in your opinion, the best way to determine whether or not something is correct. And I think that's a dangerous well, mode of thinking to say that... There will be, there will be times where... I, I mean, I do. I pray to God. I ask God for things. I talk to God. And I, there are things that I'm, sometimes I think he puts things into my head. I do. Call me crazy, but I believe it's from God. Why do I believe it's from God? Because I asked him, because I wanted him, because I don't think I would have come up with it on my own. Right, but you have no demonstration of this God. Like, I still, to this moment, don't know what it is. Like, what are you believing in? What are you even calling God? Like, what is God? Um, I guess God is, I don't know, God is love. God is... Which you just said is uh, not uh, logical. Well, but she's love not saying not God is logical either, though. Well, that's She's not true. making that claim. That's so, true. Um, okay, so you think God is love. Okay, love is an emotional response. It's created through brain chemistry. We have a pretty good understanding of, of you know, the chemicals involved. Um, are you saying that this is, is this? Love is a commandment. You are to love your neighbor. In the Bible, and it is a commandment, correct. But you, love is also a, a chemical reaction in the brain that can be measured and understood, right? Uh, sometimes you treat your neighbor, even though you don't like them very much, you treat them with love and respect and um, because that's what we should do. And, and, I, and I think atheists agree with that also. Right, but this has nothing Not to do with what I'm talking about. You were saying, we're trying to get to what are you calling God? And your first response was love. And I'm asking about love insofar as it is understood as a chemical reaction or response in the brain to certain inputs. Is that yeah. what you would call God? Mm, no. Okay. Because I don't think it's the scientific, I mean, I know that there is the human emotion of love, but I think God's love is bigger than that. What would, but we don't know what God is yet, so we're still trying to nail down what is God. So let's try number two. Is, is God anything else that we can examine? Um, well, they say God is perfect, right? So it when you believe in him, you'll, humans are not perfect. No one is. So, and when you believe mm, in him, okay, you, wait a minute. I'm getting off track here. That's an attribute. All right. So, I'm not talking about an attribute like God has dark hair or God has wings. Or, I'm talking about like what is it when we're talking? So, for example, if I have um, glasses, I don't know if you can see your screen, but I've got a pair of reading glasses. If I'm referring to these reading glasses. Um, I can talk about what they are, right? So they're plastic frames, they're, you know, glass plastic lenses. Um, you, you put them on, you see through them, and I can actually demonstrate the referent by holding it up and showing it to people or handing it yeah. to somebody who's blind. They can feel it. Um, it so be defined like that, though. But, well, what can it be defined like? Like, what, when, when um, if you were going to tell somebody who didn't believe in God what it is that we're talking about. We're going to have a conversation about God, and I say, okay, so what are we talking about here? What is it? More of a, a spirit. Uh, What's a spirit? A spirit. It's, he's, he's everywhere. He's nowhere. You know, he's, he's out in the air around us. He's watching us. He's in How would us. we detect that? Um, well, one of the ways <laughs> is to ask God into your heart. Right, but yeah. feelings, we've already yeah. said, do not indicate truth. So when we're talking about a spirit, what, what are we talking about? What is a, give me an example of a spirit that I can relate to. I don't think we can relate to spirits. Uh, so if we can't relate to them, in what way do they exist? 
I mean, they're beyond our human comprehension. We, then, we have no idea. Then how idea. can you believe in it? Well, I, I guess my question is, how does it, existence is manifestation, right? If something doesn't uh, manifest, we generally do not say that it's existent. It's, I say, it's, it's a feeling, it's around us, it's a spirit, it's a... Feelings we've already determined were not a good measure of how to tell if something is true. You're saying it's around us, but I'm trying to figure out in what way it's around me, right? Like, I, I don't understand. Well, you have, to, you have to let it in. You have to want it and ask for it and let it in. Again, that's, a, that's an emotional... What is it? Path. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and God, God's spirit, God's love, God... He loves you anyway, whether you let him in there or not. I mean, that's yeah, no, Christians have told that, us this. Yes, what I've heard that. What I'm curious about, though, is do you even know what it is we're talking about? Like, you're using words, and then when I'm asking you to define those words, you're, you're having difficulty defining the words. You say, God is a spirit. Well, what is a spirit? Spirit's in the air around us. Um, yes. In what way is it in the air around us, and why wouldn't we be able to detect it if it's actually existent? Um, I mean... Electricity, right? Yeah, around yeah. us. You can detect yeah, I would that. Have. Yes, we can detect electricity. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can measure it because we flip the light switch on, right? If we don't. Well, no, there's other the ways that <laughs> you can measure electricity yeah. using gauges that measure electricity. We can measure it in a, you know and, neurological there settings. There was a time. There was a time when it was around us where we had no tool to measure it. And so, does that mean it did not exist? Well, no, because if, if you got hit by lightning, you knew electricity Right, existed. it manifested, right? It manifested to us. In other words, nobody how could deny... That that how do you know that lightning strike wasn't God? There's no There's, reason yeah. to believe that it is. We it's know a lightning, lightning strike. Works. So here's the thing, right? We see a lightning well, strike. Why would there be reason to believe that it was electricity before we had the tools? Well, electricity is just the label that we applied to that particular yeah. form of energy that we encountered, right? So nobody's denying. Everybody agrees the electricity is there, that the lightning struck. But when you're adding something to it, when you're saying God sent the lightning, that's where I'm looking at it going, well, I saw the lightning strike, but I didn't see the God. Right? I, I didn't really see any manifestation of God. The, we don't have the tools in our world today to measure it. Then why would you believe that it exists? For the same reason I would believe that electricity existed before You can they experience it, because it, it will definitely knock you on your butt or potentially kill you, right? I mean, we can yeah, see... Can, religion has knocked many people on their butt. No, many people. It has never been demonstrated to knock anybody on their butt. Right, electricity has never been there. We do not disagree that the lightning strike occurs. You want to add something to it for which there is no demonstration, there is no manifestation, there is no reason to say that it exists. You, oh, there have there have been reasons. There are people who have died and seen the white light. Right, that could be something in their brain. I'm not saying that it's not. Right, it yeah. could. And so, why would you attribute it to a god when you know it could be something in someone's brain? Why would you reach for this other explanation when there's a perfectly reasonable explanation right in front of you and one that can be tested? I don't, I don't reach for that explanation in that particular case. I I don't know, but it seems odd to me that. A lot of people have this experience and they come back and they talk about it and, and they talk about, I mean, people talk about being filled with the spirit. I know a show I listened to by Matt, you know, you talk to, you know, you listen to music and it gives you, you know, certain feelings or words. Yeah, things, things yes. can, people have emotions. Yes, no doubt about it. I agree with you 100% on that. People have emotions. And I watched two atheists just just about a month ago in in what is it uh, in Philadelphia talking about their near death experiences, and and a lot of people who are religious, any religion, their religion gives them feelings like that. They can people so. that go that go to religious ceremonies and rituals do have feelings. Yes, I, I don't doubt that they have feelings, but we've already established that feelings are not a basis for truth. Just because I have a feeling doesn't mean I know why I'm having that feeling, right? Ask anybody that's got a phobia. Just because you have a feeling doesn't mean you understand why you're having it. When you start attributing these feelings to supernatural causes, um, that's when I have to wonder why you're reaching for a supernatural cause for chem brain chemistry that can be mapped and understood. Uh, 
And, you know, you have a, a line, right? You either believe it or you don't believe it. And sure, that's if, true. If you, do, if you do believe in God, you know, what harm what harm does it do? I don't know. You Ask wanna... ISIS, you know? I mean, seriously, there, there's been a lot of harm historically and even, even in the present day that's coming from religion. And how can you say well, what harm is there from belief? Yeah. I don't know that... I, I don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, much harm can come from atheists too. They're just, they're evil people. They, they say it's for their religion. Um, so the point but, is that, you know, people are good or bad, whether they have religion or don't have religion. That's true. Yep. Okay. But in my, in my religion, I have, I grew up um, a Navy brat. So we moved every one to three years. And my parents, my, especially my mother was very religious and they insisted I go to church. And if I didn't want to go to church with them when I got into middle school, high school, if I went with my friends, you know, they were okay with that as long as I was going. And so I went to many different churches uh, of many different religions and even within, you know, a Methodist church to a Methodist, there are vast differences, a Lutheran to a Lutheran. They're not all the same. Not all Muslims are the same. Not all Christians are the same. Sure, I agree. Right. Um, so, so when I say Christian, I may have a different um, view of what a Christian is than when you hear Christian. Well, you know what? Um, I mean, um, both Tracy and I are former Christians. Right. And I can tell you that if you poll almost any Christian, almost everybody's version of Christianity is a one-off. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and you would think that if there's an actual God that's directing this, that this entity would make sure everybody had a common understanding of what that meant. But that doesn't happen. Even within the same well, denomination, as you noted, there's vast differences in, in how people perceive this. Yeah, the closer that we get to truth, the more uniform beliefs should become. Right. And that's what's even more miraculous is that all these people on earth and all of us are different. All of us are unique. Wait, so, so the discrepancies are, are now evidence that the God is real somehow because... That if I said that there was an event that occurred and everybody who saw it had a different accounting of what had happened, would you say that that was great and like a really good miraculous thing showing that that event occurred if we all had I different wonder versions? what happened. What I if some people were happened. saying that they were there and nothing happened and some people were saying I was there and this is what happened and some people were saying I was there and the, you know this totally other thing happened and I mean it, I would the, say I have no idea what really happened. Yeah. But, yeah. but the Bible tells us but the Bible tells us he created each one of us unique. Right, Every but each of you has a God. unique idea of what the Bible's telling you and each of you has a unique idea about the what the God thing is that you're looking at and so there's no uniformity <laughs> there. There's different well, testimony. He gave us free will, right? He gave us free will to decide what we want to Free will does not does understand. not result in like varying accounts of of some Something that should be the same. If this thing is there and it's detectable as you claim it is, that yet a Christian who lets God in can detect it, there should be no discrepancy. There shouldn't be sex, right? There shouldn't be, I mean, S-E-C-T-S. There should not be like brands of Christianity. Everybody should be receiving the same revelation, shouldn't they? Why would God well, tell two people two totally different things about what he wants? Why would he tell one church to accept a uh, you know, gay pastor and another church that they should hate homosexuals or at least you know, not support them and be against them and consider them an abomination? Why is, why is it so confusing? He is telling the church that. I think they're coming up with that on their own. Well, how do you know this? How do you, how do you check it? Like, how do I check it? I've got one person telling me that God says love gay people, and I've got another person telling me God says to not love gay people or to at least not to support them. And I've got both of them saying that neither of them is speaking for God. And so I'm sitting here looking at it, and I'm saying, well, I'd love to confirm this with God, but I don't even know what God is. Well, my view is that God is love. God is love. And so if somebody is espousing a view that is not loving... Why would you talk then, to love? Yeah. Like, I don't get this. If, if you believe that God is love, what, what, why would you talk to, or is it like, I assume it's your own emotion and emotion, the, that emotion in other people. What, what is it that you say to your emotions? What do I say to my emotion? Uh, yeah, because yeah. I don't talk to my emotional feedback. 
I don't pray to it. Oh, oh, wait, are you saying that God is my emotion? If you're saying wait. God is love, yeah, then yes. You're the one who says God is no, love. No, 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 I don't, I don't think my emotion is God's definition of love. Okay, so. It, I know, so, I know it's not. Okay, so here's the thing. It, we've said that God is spirit, and we don't really know what spirit was. It's something in the air that, that is completely undetectable, unmeasurable, does not manifest. You then can we, detect it. <laughs> you're uh, claiming that we can, but when we ask you why, how, you're saying about these feelings again, and we've already discussed ah. this and said that the feelings are not valid. And then when we ah, get to the next to thing, heart. well, wait, but then you say God is love, and so I reference the thing that we define as love, and you say it's a different kind of love. So I, yeah. I'm trying to figure out what good is it to even use the label love if you don't mean love, if you mean something completely different. Well, well, I mean, some people describe love as sex. No, I'm not talking that. And, and you know, there are different kinds well, of love. The brother love, the child love of your children. And so there are many kinds of love. And God's love is well, huge. It's huge. How do you love. know this? Yeah, how do you know? How do you know this? You're telling me this, but how do you know this? I mean, um, God's love is huge. Based on what? Like, where are you getting this information? It's what I believe. I know it's what you yes. believe. I'm asking you why you believe it. Um, because, because, it because it makes sense. How does, How does it make sense? sense? You can't because even explain I, it. How is it making sense to you? Because I feel all humans um, should love one another. You just finished saying okay. feelings are not a valid metric for truth. Why do you keep going back to feelings when we, we established early on that a feeling is, does not mean that something is valid and true? Well, you agree that we should all love one another, don't you? It de that's I, don't, irrelevant. I would have to talk a little bit more about that. It depends. You know, that's I, I think that, irrelevant. I, I think that people should be respected as human beings um, yes. to certain degrees, but I also think that you know, asking people to love everyone is a little extreme. I'm not sure that people are capable of loving everyone. And, and we're not. We can just try. We can just I'm not sure that it's even wise to yeah. try. I would have to talk more about it. It may be completely you know, not okay to love everyone. I don't know. But what I'm trying to figure out here is it, it just seems like you, you believe because you have feelings and even though you know feelings are not valid, you're just going with them. No, they are valid. Uh, like we said that. earlier that you can feel things and they're not always true, that feelings cannot always be true, that they have to correspond to other evidence that demonstrates it's true, such as your husband actually is cheating. There has to be something there to demonstrate well, that. To me, to me, there's evidence, and you don't believe Right, because you're, you just attribute things to God without, I mean, you just basically say a baby's born, that's God. You know, a bull eye is, is breeding in someone's stomach, that's just evil. That's, I mean, you just, you seem to just yeah. randomly pick and choose, like, whatever it is that you want to go along with whatever you think, and you're not, you're not verifying this against anything. You're not doing any verification. Well, Do you care and, whether it's and true or not? Not only that, but I'm, I'm not sure you have good understanding of what this verification process entails, because earlier you said that um, your idea of God is beyond our understanding. It is. It is. So on what basis do you believe this entity even exists? If you can't even understand it. Yeah, if you can't understand it, how can you I, believe it? I can't, I, can, I can't understand it in its totality. I can't understand everything. Well, tell me and something you do understand about it. Tell me, like, I well, she said God's love is huge. That was something she said. She that I cool. understand that we should love one another. Well, and, and that gets us to God exactly how? I mean, that's, that's, I understand that's a personal belief you have. I don't know that I agree with it, but I mean, I don't see how that's any kind of, of, of evidence because for a God. Just, well, without that, people don't think they have to or necessarily should. And but what? Love one another. Well, I and don't I know that we necessarily be, should. I think it would be a much better place if everyone did. If everyone did, but if I, for yeah. example, love everyone, I could really get screwed in that bargain. Yeah. So it depends uh, on who you're well, asking me to love. Bad. You know, it's like there's all kinds of things that if everyone did it, it would be great. But if some people go along with, you know, are, are bound by that philosophy and others aren't, they could get really damaged from it, you know? Well, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you should leave yourself open to, to you know, if someone... Yeah, you it's know, kind of irrelevant because the point yeah. is, how does God relate to all this? And right now, I have no idea. Yeah, 
I mean, you keep saying it's related, but you're not demonstrating it in any way. And so I'm wondering, like, yeah. the way we, how do, you, how do we tell when a claim is true? If somebody tells you something, how do you assess whether or not claims are true? Do you just say however you feel about whatever they're telling you determines whether it's true I, or not? I listen to, I listen to other people's point of view. I hear what they have to say, and I think, does that make sense to me? Does it feel right? Does it feel right? There are my feelings again, right? So back and to think feelings. So you don't really compare it to reality in some way to see, like if I told you that the street light was green and we can cross now, like the, the walk sign is green, we can go. If it felt right to you, you would say that's fine, even if it, you know, the, the, the sign didn't appear to be green? Well, if the sign wasn't green, it probably wouldn't feel like it was green. You know, not <laughs> it wouldn't <laughs> feel like, okay, what I'm saying is, the way that we verify what people are telling us, claims that people are making, is we compare them to reality. And right now what I'm trying to do is, is see what is this reality of God that I can compare your claims to. When you tell me God's love is huge, I would like to figure out how I can test that. Like, how do I determine whether what you're saying is accurate? And, and if I can't figure out how to test it, how have you tested it? And if you haven't done anything to verify it, then you're basically saying you just believe things whether they're true or not it doesn't matter to you. Well, I think what a lot of the tests say, you know, results will come back and they'll, you know, 20 years ago, oh, smoking is great for you. Then, you know, 10 years ago, oh, smoking's bad for you. Oh, eggs are bad for you. Oh, no, they're good right. for you. Right. You right. Can, we, can, we can have, but, but the fact is that you have to go with the evidence that you have available to you because if you're not going with the evidence that's available to you, what in the world are you going with? If I'm telling you I, that the light is green, and the light looks red, and you're not going to go with the evidence because sometimes, you know, we don't have full evidence, so maybe there's something else going on here, and it's just my eyes are messed up, and it really is green, so I'm going to step out into this intersection. The fact that we sometimes do not have complete knowledge of something, and therefore our assessment of it is incomplete and may actually be incorrect, is not a reason why you should just say evidence doesn't matter and that it's not important to test claims against evidence. It's the only metric. How else would you verify a claim? But that evidence is, I mean, the evidence that you shouldn't smoke or that you should smoke, right? I mean, the evidence isn't necessarily like even in an earlier caller, you were saying that, you know, there was evidence about the vaccines and it was and it was validated by a prominent magazine and everybody uh, oh. believed it. And then it was- Well, just, I understand no. what she's saying. I mean, yeah. I get what she's yeah. get, get driving at. It, so, but the point is, if you can't compare, if you say basically sometimes we have incomplete evidence, therefore I'm not going to, to check claims against reality to see whether or not they're true because we can't always trust that we have a complete picture of reality. What in the world would you use to verify claims or are you suggesting we should never try to verify claims against reality? I think that we don't have enough time in our lives to validate every single Right. So, but the important right. ones are real. The ones so that we we're going to, to what other people say, and right. we hear about what makes sense to us, and we form our opinions. But what makes sense to you should align with what you experience in reality, outside your feelings, right? I mean, despite my, my how it, feelings are part of reality. Our feelings, feelings are, are real. real. I agree, but their feelings can reflect an in. And, and our feelings often are not aligned with truth, right? How we feel about a thing may not be true, but, and we see this all the time, okay? So I can have a feeling that my spouse is faithful and they're not. I can feel like they're cheating yeah. and they're not. But what, yeah. what matters is, do you see a difference between a person who says, like we described earlier, my spouse is staying out late at night. My spouse is, seems to be telling me their places where they're not. They're not answering their phone anymore. And I'm starting to wonder if they're cheating. Okay, that's one scenario. The other scenario is my spouse comes home on time every night. He's always picks up his phone when I call. He's always everywhere he wants to be. But I just have this feeling he's cheating. Yeah, I see a difference. Okay. Do you think that one would be wiser than the other? See, but I see evidence that you're not seeing. <laughs> evidence Me, should be available right. to no. everybody. To what? What good right. is evidence that people can't I, examine? I see trees. I see. Rain. I see trees yes. as well, but I don't see God. Um, 
I know, but I do. <laughs> do you see God or do you see a tree? I see God. Why? <laughs> Where? I mean, if I were you know, seeing know. things and I could not demonstrate them to anyone else. I mean, how is that not like that, that the, the holiday movie where the guy sees the angel or the rabbit or whatever it is? I mean, Harvey, right? I mean, if, if, if you see it and I'm not seeing it. I can show them to fellow believers. Well, you all, yeah, you all, yeah. But, but what I guess what I'm saying is that the part of, part of what makes testing and experimenting valuable is that it removes subjectivity, right? So you have to have an objective. Is there not, do you not agree that there's an objective reality that despite what we all believe, there is the truth, right? Like whether or not I'm, I'm holding glasses in my hand is not subjective. The truth is no one has created a tree without a seed no one has created. So what? Yes, are you that's how it works. People don't do everything. I agree. People are exactly. not responsible for everything that exists. I completely agree. I don't exactly. see how that means there's a God. How else? Where is your and, evidence and again, that God created it? And again, we're, I mean, we're back to... How else? Where's the evidence that he did not? Uh, no, oh, no, no, okay, there's no. something here called the burden of proof, right? Yeah. I'm not making a claim about how the universe was created, but you're claiming a God created it because people didn't create it, right? Therefore, God created not it. Not only didn't they, they, they can't. Okay, so people can't, so, I can't do lots of things, right? I can't build a rocket that goes to Jupiter. That doesn't mean that if we do one day do that, that a God did it. If People can't do many things. The gauge of whether or not a God exists is not people can do everything or else a God exists. God gave, God gave them the knowledge to build the ship. My point here yeah. is that just because people can't do everything does not mean a God exists. Why would, why would what I can do be evidence for the existence of a God? Why are limits on my capacity evidence of anything other than limits on my capacity? So, so you know, as I said earlier, we are, we are all created uniquely, right? And we all have our gifts and we all have our weaknesses. And we, we are, what's the word, supplement each other, complement. We complement each other. We can, yes. Uh, yeah, and I mean, to me, that's another... To me, that's another example of, of you know, loving one another for our gifts, for our talents that we're given, no matter what they are. How is I mean, this a demonstration day. of a God? Because he gives us our talents. Okay, if I Where say to you, if I say to you that there's a magic gremlin that gives us our talents, or that my cat gives us our talents, I mean, because I feel like he does. I think my cat loves everyone and his love is huge, <laughs> right? I mean, t prove to me that I'm wrong. I can't. So do you and think I, that's I, reasonable of I, me? Well, when I first called in, I, I told you I won't be able to prove this to you. And I, I said that it was there for, if you can't demonstrate it to me, then I don't know why you feel it's been sufficiently demonstrated for yourself. Because uh, it goes back to the feelings. I can feel God within me. Working. And we've already said that the yes. feelings are not valid measures for truth. Well, you've said that. <laughs> we agreed no, to it no, earlier in the show. We agreed that, we, that just because we feel a thing does not mean that it's accurate. That a feeling well, that something is true does, does not correlate to truth. And, I've all, and we've also, well, I've also said that the love as we know it is not God's love. Right, which know. means that God has something that I don't even know what it is that you're calling love, but it's not. It's like, I don't even, I mean, I, that helps me not at all. Uh, I, I wish I could help you. I, I do wish I could help you. Yeah, I, I think if you understood more about what you believed, you might be able to explain it a little more thoroughly. But right now, it seems like this is very some vague stuff with no real evidence, and you're just believing it because it feels good. That's how it's coming I across. I, I don't mind feeling good. I don't mind feeling well, good. I don't mind either. feeling good so either, but I don't gauge whether or not what I feel is, you know, accurate as far as if, whether it's reflecting. I could be afraid of something that's nothing to fear. You know, I mean, feelings just don't mean, feelings are a result of what we're experiencing generally. And when people start to say, I'm experiencing something that is completely un 
uh, I don't even know what to call it, that mm -hmm. does not manifest in any way, shape, or form. Um, I don't the even know. Caller, the previous caller who was talking about the AA meetings and how they were pushing God, and if it helps, if it helps them, and you say it doesn't help them. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't help them. But, but I imagine to start out with a few people, maybe it helps. And if it helps, why not? Why not? I mean, I had because I had it doesn't help. because you can harm people yes. by offering them help that doesn't help, right? So let's say that I have a bunch uh -huh. of people coming to me for help, and I'm not really helping them, and then a couple you know people what? actually I, I, get something from it, but the rest of the people are just wasting their time thinking that I'm going to help them, and as a result, they're not going and getting help elsewhere because they think I'm helping them, but I'm really not. I That's had harm. back surgery, and before I went into my back surgery, I was in such pain with my back. And you know, my mother-in-law was like, "Oh, well, I have a friend whose husband in Mexico swears by this these things you metal, they're magnets, and you put them on the back, and it draws the iron in your blood to your back and helps heal it." And I'm like, "I'll try it." <laughs> I've never had much faith in chiropractors, but you know what? I went to a chiropractor. I'm like, "I'm in pain. I will try. I will try anything that." takes this pain away. Yeah, people and, get desperate and, yes. and people and people prey on desperate people, I completely agree. And I mean, not I, I wasn't gonna pay any money, you know, for the uh, I'd pay I paid the money for the chiropractor, but you know, it wasn't an exorbitant fee yeah. mostly covered my insurance. But but you know, it, it, if it helps them even temporarily, I, I don't I don't see the harm in it. Because a because lot of people aren't helped. I mean, that's the, that's the problem. Is a lot of people are being fleeced. Basically, saying it's okay to fleece a hundred thousand people because you know twenty of them oh, oh, thought they oh, walked away him. feeling better. Is it? He doesn't charge any money. They don't charge money. Who doesn't charge money? A. They're not fleecing but, people. No, well, but, but but you are you are using their. I mean, time is a resource. Right? When, right. You, when you take somebody's time and when you stop them from going to get real help, because you, it's like a faith healer. If I'm going to this faith healer and I'm not going to see a doctor, that's harmful. Well, okay, so I, I do go to doctors, although I feel like half the time they don't know what they're doing. And it's not their fault because we're all created different and we're all just guinea pigs and what works for one person no, doesn't necessarily work for another person. <laughs> No. Um, you disagree that what works for one person may not work for another? No, I, I, I don't disagree I, I with do, that. I do agree that in general, you know, you're going to have exceptions to yeah. treatments and cures. I get that. But I, I can mm -hmm. pretty well, you know, there are certain things that kill people that they don't survive. And there are other things right. that are treatable. And we can actually pinpoint yeah. what percentage of people will successfully respond to treatment, even if there's a certain percentage that don't. And when yeah. you're I using, a, not, when you use a treatment I that shows never, no efficacy. I would never tell people not to go to the doctor. I'm just saying when you go take it with a grain of salt. And I'm saying <laughs> that when somebody says, I'm offering you help, and they're not really helping, that time, no, because you can I test no. whether or not a thing helps, right? I mean, you can I, actually I check. Went to, I went to AA meetings. When I was 17, I got a DUI, and I was ordered by the court to go to AA meetings. And you know what? Well, I didn't want to go, and I didn't really, I mean, I didn't want to be there. I would say it helped. Why would you say, what did it help you do? It helped me, you know, realize that I'm, <laughs> there's a higher power that we have to turn things over to. But, but you already believed that. I, I believed it, but it reinforced it. Okay, so. I wasn't, I wasn't acting on it. Sometimes I believe things like I know what I should eat, but I don't eat what I know I should eat. <laughs> okay. You know, and. So. You had a youthful indiscretion, and you did something that lots of 17-year-olds have probably done. You got caught. You went to an intervention program that's noted for its um, ineffectiveness. And you went on to never do that youthful indiscretion again, which most people don't. Why do people, so many people go if it's not effective? Because they believe the bullshit. And they're well, court ordered into this. 
which is another another problem. It doesn't matter. It. I guess that's the point is it doesn't matter if you believe it. You can go look at the numbers. You can go yeah. look at the figures of people that are actually that actually stay off these drugs and alcohol when they go through these programs versus what and they're claiming. It's probably not zero percent. And you can look at people who get no treatment and you can compare that group. Right. You can compare different mm -hmm. groups who have gotten no treatment, who have gotten this treatment, who have tried other treatments. We can look at the results yeah. and compare them. This isn't just like a black hole where it's anybody's guess. There's data. And I guess that's what I'm saying. When you have competing claims, how do you resolve it? You resolve it by comparing those claims to reality and determining who it is that's telling you the truth. And you just don't seem inclined to do that. You seem more inclined to go with your feelings, which that's, if that's what you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. But feelings are not a good metric for truth. Okay, until they turn out to be right. No, they're still <laughs> well, not a good metric for truth. Not. You know, I because get, how you get there, how you get <laughs> to the conclusion matters. It's just like with the gumballs in the in the in the glass jar, right? If I if somebody comes out and says, "Are there there's an odd number in there?" I have no reason other than just I just feel like there's an odd number, and I say, "Okay, I believe you. I accept that is true because of your feeling." And then we count it, and it's odd. That doesn't mean that I that I used a valid method to get there. It just means I got lucky that it turned out to be what I, my conclusion, this is what I was saying before, the conclusion can be correct for really bad reasons. You can, you can use horrible reasoning and still come up with the right answer sometimes, but it's not because of the reasoning. maybe that's reasoning. not horrible reasoning. Maybe, maybe it's not horrible reasoning. Maybe it is because be odd. there would be no way to know the difference between a feeling you have that came from God and a feeling you have that you just felt. There is no way to tell the difference between those two things. I don't know. To me, it, I can. It feels like I can tell the difference. It feels <laughs> like you can tell. You're using. <laughs> you feel like you can tell the difference between the feelings that God is letting you feel versus the feelings you have that are just feelings. And the, the, but there is no, there is no objective reality that demonstrates that you're correct in what you feel is correct here. And that's the problem. You're just, it's subjective. You're just basically going by gut and you're not applying any reason or, or comparing it to actual evidence. And you're actually giving arguments for rejecting what evidence would be available. It's very, it's, it, I, I don't know how you would live your life if you treated all things like this. Like if I wanted to buy a house and the owner is someone I don't know and they tell me the house is in good shape, I'm not going to say, oh, cool, well, then I don't need to spend all that money to get somebody to come in and, you know, check it out. Check out your no, house. No, because, because they're human, right? And they... But you can have you a feeling that they're telling you the truth. <laughs> yeah, I still want the house to be checked. I don't care if I love the house. I don't care if I feel like God wants me to have this house. The fact is, I want somebody to come in there and do the, the checks and make sure that the wiring is okay, that this thing is built all right, that the foundation is solid. I'm going to have somebody come in and check that because my feelings are not the best way to tell if this house is in good shape. And I think that if I honestly felt, honestly felt that God wanted me to have this house that you know something was just compelling me to this you would buy it sight unseen it right uh my dad bought a house sight unseen taking a risk aren't you um maybe. isn't that a big risk <laughs> Nate, would you advise somebody to buy a house without getting it inspected would you tell somebody that's a smart thing to do in ordinary circumstances, I would in any circumstance, when is it not smart to have an inspector come in and check the house? When somebody feels compelled for some reason they don't understand by God, perhaps, or they just think they just know. There's so you don't know where know. this is coming from. It could be some childhood neurosis driving it. But you think it's a smart idea to go ahead and buy this house sight unseen and not get an inspection. What? Why wouldn't you want to compare it to reality? If, if, you, if the inspector came yeah. back and said, the foundation is completely shot, this house is not going to be standing in another two years, would you say, I trust my gut and I'm just going to buy it anyway because I really think God wants me to buy it? Would you really do that? 
I I cannot say because I'm not in the circumstance that, I, and I don't feel compelled right now to buy a house with a poor foundation. But I know that there are many stories from many people who did things um, without explanation, possibly things they didn't even want to do, and something amazing affected other people. And so you things, you're saying right those now, are anecdotes, right? But I mean, what but you're basically saying is. I would, I'm not sure whether or not I would buy a house if the inspection came back and said that this thing is falling apart, that I don't know if I would or not. And to, because my feelings drive the decision to such a degree that I can't know that I would do what the evidence would very strongly advise against doing, that, you know, that I think the house is going to be fine because I think that because I have faith and trust in God that he has some reason for wanting me to. Wanting you to buy a house with a shot foundation. And there's the harm of religion. But no, not necessarily. Yes, no. necessarily. Yes. I mean, you just demonstrated yes. it, that people will make unwise decisions because of gut feelings about you're God with no it, evidence. You're assuming it's unwise. It's unwise it's to buy a house that you're, gonna, that you're purchasing and you think you want to get this house and the house is in crap condition. Now, if you're a flipper, maybe that's a great thing for you. But if you're just purchasing yeah. the house, I mean, what you're basically saying is I'm going to go with my gut despite the evidence because of my religious views compel me in that you direction. Don't the end of the, you don't know the end of the story. Neither do you. Neither do you. That's why it's a risk. Exactly. And so what you're basically saying is you would make a, a decision that appears to be unwise because of a gut feeling over evidence. And you asked earlier, what is the harm of religion? And I'm telling you, that's it. Because you think having faith and trust in God is a bad thing. When it compels you to yes. say, I'm not sure if I would do something that is unwise because of my gut over evidence, yes. Yes. Well, I guess we'll agree to disagree then. Yeah, my gut tells me this pastor didn't molest all the kids in the church, right? So I don't care that there's all the children coming forward and telling me otherwise. God has told me that he's innocent. I mean, this is the thing. When you trust your gut over evidence... This is the harm of religion. No, I'm sure if all these children were coming forward and saying this. No, because I mean, what we're talking about is following your gut instinct over evidence. And you're saying you would do that probably. You're not sure that you wouldn't. And I'm saying that's the harm. That is why faith healing people don't what? take their children to the hospital. Because they feel. What if, these, what if all these children come forth and the guy was innocent? No, I'm not saying that that's not possible. What I'm saying is that so, when you so use... I condemn him without evidence because my gut tells me he's innocent. The children's children statements saying, are evidence. Yeah, I'm saying that when you have evidence to the contrary, when, you have a, when you're saying you have an inspector... Look, I mean, what if you have video of him molesting the children and God is telling you he didn't do it? I mean, at, at what point do you finally say, no, I don't that, care what's in my gut? Happen. What do you mean that can't, no, that can't happen? happen? Children no, die no. because their parents believe God wants them to faith heal their kid. Children die over this, over God telling people that they shouldn't take their child to a doctor, that they should just sit and pray over the kid, and the kid died. And according to you, that may be a really good thing, and we're just not seeing the end of it. No, I yes. feel they're misguided. Yes. How do you know that I that's not a good misguided. thing, that God is plan it's just part of God's plan that their child is supposed to die, and then something really good is going to come out of it, just like the messed up house foundation? How can you tell me that you know that the child dying was not in the best interest of everyone else? Well, it's possible you would bring him to the hospital and he would still die. It is possible. Yeah. So should we make that assumption? But I'm not saying that that would benefit someone else. I'm not saying that child would benefit. I'm just saying, you know, I agree. P people die in horrible situations. Right. And horrible. sometimes they die because somebody's, somebody's religious belief compelled them to think it was the best thing to do to not get them medical help. And I totally disagree when someone's belief harms other people. Because Why? Why? You just finished God. saying that even if it appears to be a harmful thing, it might be good and we don't know. So why would you condemn anybody for doing anything in the name of God? Uh, 
I didn't say that. I didn't say even though it appears to be harmful, it might be good. I'm not saying it's good that a, a guy molests children. You're say, saying you that. said that it was it might that I should think that it might be good if the house is falling apart and you buy it anyway, right? This is a but situation where. Who, what do you mean it's different? In that situation. You and anybody that lives in that house could I potentially didn't say I was be going hurt. To live in the house. I didn't say I was going to live in What if God told you to live in the house? I mean, come on. You're basically saying you would do whatever God is telling you to do. And then you're saying that That's if something true. bad happens from it, it might just be a larger good that we don't see. And we need to look ahead I, to the possibility that this is a good, this could be a good thing. We don't know because we don't see the I whole don't picture. Believe, I also told you that God is love. And I don't believe if anything is telling me to do something bad, it is not coming from God. Did God tell people to kill a bunch of people in the Bible? People, you know what? <laughs> Did he? Yeah. I think that some of the Bible is um, storytelling. Okay, so if okay, you so feel like it's part of the Bible that you should listen to, then you do. And if you feel like it's not part of the Bible you should listen to, then you don't. I, I mean, I don't know that this call is going to get anywhere because basically this is just about you do what you feel. And when when it suits you to say that a negative thing could turn into a positive, you're down with it. When when it sounds really egregious, then you're not down with it. It's like this is just not even, there's no not even consistency, yeah. like an internal consistency to your reasoning. So, that I can I mean, find. We're, we're actually over time here, but um, Diana, what it sounds like to me is that you were heavily indoctrinated into your religion by your very religious parents at a very young age. And you just haven't given that too much thought since then. Cause, uh, well, because I, I enjoy it. I, well, I have no reason to want to give it up. Yeah, yeah heroin addicts enjoy it too. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't mean that it's a good idea. And I really think you should give this some more thought because you're, you're not even presenting a coherent explanation for what it is you believe. Uh, I mean, you claim to be a Christian. We mentioned the fact that God commanded genocide in the Bible, and suddenly you don't think that that's real. So I'm, I'm not sure where you are, but I, I think you well, probably should give this some more thought. Okay. All right. And I, I, I mean, it, yeah. And if your son has agreed to go to a pastor, I hope you got his money's worth on this one. Okay, good. Okay. All right. All right. Well, Thanks. thank you for taking my call.